All right, what's going on everyone? We're back here at Hoogies Imports with another special vehicle here. So this one, uh, we've had quite a few sandbars on the channel before. Um, so this one is a 1993 Subaru sandbar, four wheel drive, five speed. And the special thing about this one is that it is supercharged. So of course, um, for you sandbar, sandbar nights, sandbar aficionados, uh, those of you who know about these things, uh, this one, so these ones typically come with a uh, 660cc uh, inline four, carbureted, naturally aspirated, uh, about 40 horsepower engine. Uh, this one has fuel injection and of course a little itty bitty supercharger on there that adds about 15 horsepower, bumps up to about 55 horsepower. So, which, you know, doesn't sound like much, but it definitely makes a pretty big difference as to the drivability of this thing. Uh, you'll definitely get a little bit pushed back in your seat in first and second gear, which is nice. Um, you know, especially for a little, uh, little tiny little K truck, like, yeah, excuse me, K truck like this. So that's one of the main reasons why I love these sandbars, because you can get a uh, supercharged option, which is really cool. Um, and then this one also has a uh, five-speed manual, like I said, and push-button four-wheel drive. So this one here appears to have been uh, very well taken care of. Um, I do have the factory service manual with it, uh, but. Unfortunately, no maintenance records in there, but uh, it runs and drives very well. Um, it's got these cool little aftermarket six spoke wheels on there. So, you know, if you don't like the factory steelies, then you might be a little bit excited by those. Um, yeah, it's a cool little, uh, cool little upgrade as compared to the stock wheels. So as you can see, the body's uh, clean overall. There's no corrosion or rust on the body at all. Um, you know, typical surface thrust underneath, just like, you know, uh, but very clean overall underneath, which I'll show you guys in just a minute. There are some little dings and dents on the bed, of course. Um, it was worked, used as a work truck after all during its time in Japan. And as you can hear, it idles nicely, starts up well, and um, yeah, really no issues with this thing. It runs and drives great. So yeah, as you can see, uh, go over some of the imperfections on here. A couple little scuffs and dings on there on the outside of the bed. The bed's still dirty, haven't given it a good scrub yet, but as you can see, it's definitely used as a work truck. Has some dings and scuffs on there. Um, no corrosion or anything like that, just a little bit of surface rust in the, in the, in the bed there. Um, there is one little bit of corrosion, and that is here on this little headache rack, which fortunately it is a piece of the vehicle that is detachable. But yeah, as you can see, there's uh, some corrosion there on that. But other than that, very clean truck. Uh, this one came out of, this was an auction purchase, uh, 3.5 grade out of the USS Tokyo. So I would imagine it spent most of its time in Tokyo. And uh, so it typically means that they're not gonna be crazy with any kind of rust or anything like that. But yeah, let's, we'll take a look underneath to show you guys, it's very clean under there. Nice and clean, uh, no kind of play in the steering wheel or anything, anything like that. So all the bushings feel nice. I've had a few trucks where there's a little bit of play where we had to uh, fix some of the bushings and replace those, but this one feels nice and tight. So always happy to see that. So yeah, the interior is very clean on this thing. A couple little imperfections in here, of course. We've got the factory sandbar floor match, which is really nice. Headliner looks great in this thing as well. And I believe it's one of the ones, I think the, I you know, maybe the interior light doesn't work, but that would have been a pretty rare, <laughs> rare find. The uh, interior lights on these little K trucks don't typically work too often when I find them. We do have the factory sandbar uh, user manual, which is really nice to, to see. Of course, it's all in Japanese, so um, might not help too much for people who do not, do not speak Japanese or read it or do not have Google Translate. <laughs> yeah, we got a nice little factory radio there as well. Um, again, all Japanese frequencies, so you can only really catch the classical music channel here, at least in North Carolina where I'm at. Um, but you can easily change that out for a different aftermarket head unit. We'll go around to the driver's side. There's our little Subaru sandbar logo there. 
So we're sitting at just under 95,000 kilometers, which, oh God, I don't know what that, what that uh, translate to, translates to in miles, maybe around 50,000 miles or so, a little bit more than that or a little bit less. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, right around there, I'll have to do the exact one and it'll be listed on the website once it's posted up for sale and all that. So um, the driver's seat has been reupholstered, it seems, at some point in its life. So as you can see, it's a different texture or either that or just the bottom piece has just been completely changed out from a different truck. But there is a little tear in there. Uh, yet again, as usual with these little sandbar trucks, there's always a little <laughs> rip in the seat from the ones I've found. But um, yeah, you know, these little imperfections make it worth it when you have a supercharged truck. And yes, unfortunately this one does not have AC. Again, another little, uh, I mean, you can get supercharged sandbars with AC, but they're a little bit more rare and a little bit more expensive. So this one will be a little bit cheaper for a supercharged sandbar because of the fact that it does not have AC. But you know, for, for someone like me, I don't really mind. I, I, I don't mind rolling that with the windows down. Um, yeah, it makes it a little bit difficult on days like this when it's like 95 degrees, but it's definitely doable. The fan, the fan is strong on them and you know, rolling with the windows down don't want to take the power away from the engine by having that compressor running you know what i'm saying but anyways i guess we'll get into the driver's seat there's really not too much to go over with these little trucks just because you know they're pretty bare bones for what they are pretty utilitarian but they are very useful and uh yeah so again we've got the uh strong fan that actually feels kind of nice right now but yeah, very strong fan in these things um and if you guys don't know uh these little sandbars the four-wheel drive ones the they do have push button four wheel drive, which is really nice. So you can push this little button here. And then on the dash there, you can see our little four wheel drive light came on. And you can hear the actuator, the, I think it's vacuum powered, I would, I think. Um, but yeah, you can hear it click on and then hit the button again. Our four wheel drive light goes away and you can hear it click off. Um, and yeah, these things, they come with a little five speed manual transmission which is really nice. Um, all the gears are nice. These sandbar transmissions are pretty notchy, which I do, I like the uh, the feeling of them. And the shifter's nice and tight on these things. You can see it goes right back into place. Um, yeah, one, one cool little feature that does have, it has an extra low gear as well. So, you know, you find your first, excuse me, find your first gear right there. And then of course you go, and to get to the extra low gear, you go over like you're going to first, you hit that little, the stopper there, the wall, whatever you want to call it. And then you go over one more and then up into extra low that automatically kicks on four wheel drive, which is nice when you're in extra low. And, uh, yeah, when you come out of it, it, uh, four wheel drive kicks off. And for those of you wondering, that is the, uh, emergency brake light that's on there. No kind of warning here. There's my e-brake off, but yeah, with that, um, you know, it, uh, it holds temperature just fine. It's been idling here for a minute and excuse me, my dirty finger. Um, yeah, it's been idling here for quite a while and, you know, sits right in the middle. It doesn't overheat or anything like that. Uh, these little Clover four engines are great little engines. Um, they idle very smooth compared to a three cylinder, I would say. And plus, you know, you don't get any kind of harsh vibrations in here in the cabin because the engine's all the way in the back, which is nice about these sandbars. I know a lot of people prefer them because of that reason. And they're a little bit more comfortable on the road than some of the other trucks. But yeah, and uh, these things have decent room. Just for reference, I am uh, five foot ten and a half. We'll round it up to five five eleven. Um, but yeah, as you can see, I have plenty of room. This is the seat all the way back. Um, this is typically how I ride, but I can I can scoot it up and be comfortable as well. But yeah, good amount of space there. So I've seen much taller people do test drives in these things, and they they typically fit just fine. Uh, the sandbar I know has one of the larger interiors for the or just the you know the basic cab ones i know daihatsu has the jumbo cab as well which uh has a little bit more space than this one even more but that does infringe that does um infringe on the uh the bed space that you do have so yeah anyways um i guess while we're in here we can go ahead and take it for a quick spin around the block here show you guys some of this uh supercharged power and as you can hear it's idling just great um yeah i haven't had an issue with this thing uh, I did have to change out the alternator and the battery on this thing when I got it, which is pretty typical, you know, the three month long journey from Japan or however long it ends up being, uh, typically 
and it seems about 50% of the batteries are completely dead by the time I get the car over here. And uh, yeah, we just got unlucky with this one that the alternator happened to be bad as well. But we changed that out, got a brand new alternator on there, uh, new battery and all that. So we're good to go with that. And uh, yeah, so anyways, without further ado, let's go ahead. We'll give it a little test, test drive here. Pull off in first gear here. Clutch feels nice. Again, the shifter feels great as well. You'll have to excuse. I always, I know I always say it, but you'll have to excuse my driving and shifting with one hand here. I'm trying to record at the same time. So anyways, we'll sit in second here so we can uh, give it some of that supercharged power around the corner here and excuse all the noise around here. It seems like everyone's mowing the lawn right about now. All right, let's give it some power. Here we go. Woo! Yeah, it's going uphill too, it's pretty quick. But yeah, we'll give it some more power when we get out on the road here. Um, yeah, like I said, you know, these things aren't super quick. It probably doesn't translate very well in the video, but these, for being a little uh, a little K truck, these things uh, do have some pretty good power on the supercharged ones. So this first gear, all right, let's give it some gas in a second. Here we go. Oh yeah. All right. So there you have it. Uh, excuse all the wind noise. Like I said, there's no AC in this thing. So I will be rolling with the windows down for this video. But, uh, but yeah, as you can see there, I mean, it's got a great pickup. Um, you know, can't complain about that. Definitely a major upgrade over the over the naturally aspirated ones. And of course you have the advantage of fuel injection as well for reliability for purposes. I mean, I know that the carbureted ones are perfectly reliable as well, but um, yeah, you just don't, you don't have any, any carbureted stuff to worry about on these ones, just uh, straight up fuel injection. So, um, so yeah, you know, this thing, uh, like I've shown, it runs and drives great. Um, like I said, yeah, of course, no, no AC, but if you're if you're someone like me again, uh, it doesn't really bother me too, too much. It would be nice to have, but even when I do have AC in these things, I don't typically run it all that often just because it sucks away a lot of the power from the engine, but um, I digress. Yeah, great little truck. Uh, I would definitely take the supercharger over having the AC, but having both would be awesome. But like I said, being a supercharger without AC, this one would be a little bit cheaper than your typical supercharged one. And again, there we go, everyone is mowing their lawns today. But yeah, we'll come over here, we'll pull around, and uh, yeah, clutch is great, everything is great on this thing, so. For a 1993 little work truck, I would say it's in uh, pretty decent condition for sure. Let's pull over here in the shade. I think you guys can hear some more of that idle while we're up against the, against the wall here. Yeah, great little truck clutch is great really not too much more to go over in this thing but yeah headliners clean and uh yeah of course there'll be more pictures online um so actually i will get out here i'll uh show you guys the engine bay real quick while we're at it so we'll go ahead and we'll shut that thing down and let's come around excuse me parking right next to the trash cans here but yeah of course, we do have an engine cover right here, which I'll post plenty of pictures of that online. Um, I don't have my drill here to open that real quick, but um, actually maybe I will. Maybe I'll grab that, but anyways, we'll go ahead. We'll take a look at the engine bay here from the back. So just get your key. You typically want to push it in a little bit. Then you can pull it straight down. So there you go. Uh, we have our little Clover 4 engine back there. Appears to be pretty nice. Um, yeah. Runs and drives great. I have, I have no complaints about it. So yeah, really nice. That's the one really good thing about the sandbar is that there's plenty of access to the engine. You don't have to work underneath the seats like some of the um, cab over ones, which are, you know, where the engine is uh, more mid-engine rather than rear engine like this one is, which is nice. But uh, yeah, I'll be right back uh, with the engine bay open so I can show you guys from the top. All right, so we're back. We got the engine bay open for you guys, just so you can take a quick peek. And as you can see, we got our brand new uh, alternator on there, which we needed, of course. Um, 
and yeah, of course, check it out. Got our electronic multi-point injection supercharged engine there, which is very nice to see. Um, yeah, like I said, having that extra power of the supercharger is really, really nice. 15 extra horsepower doesn't sound like much, but when you're only starting with 40 to work with, getting up to 55 horsepower is really nice. Great advantage over the uh, yeah, over the naturally aspirated one. So yeah, we got the, yeah, like I said, brand new uh, alternator on there. Everything's running and driving great. New battery, all that. Um, yeah, got our alternator and then we got our little supercharger over there. Yeah, and as you can see, the supercharger is not very big, but uh, definitely does the job. But yeah, there you have it. Uh, plenty of access to the engine bay. Another really nice thing about these Clover 4 engines is that they are non-interference. So, you know, if you ever have an issue with the timing belt, the timing belt breaks or what have you, um, you won't have to worry about any kind of internal engine damage. And uh, yeah, to access this is just four little screws, which is really nice, really easy to get to. So, so yeah, I mean, with that, there's really not too much more to go over. Just a nice little truck overall for sure. Take a look back at the interior. And uh, yeah, this thing will be up for sale soon on my website, whoeasyimports.com. Um, and yeah, if you guys have any questions or anything like that, feel free to reach out and I will be happy to answer any and all questions that you guys might have. I love these little supercharged trucks. Definitely worth the uh, little extra money that you'll be paying for a supercharged one over a nat naturally aspirated one. But um, yeah, like I said, I think uh, this thing will be listed at a pretty fair price considering it does not have AC but it is a supercharged one that runs and drives great. So um, yeah, with that, I guess we'll uh, end the video here. And if you guys have any questions for me, definitely let me know and uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. All right, see ya.